This afternoon we've gathered in this place, not because of death, but because of life, beautiful life that was lived before us. As I look at Obed and think of all the wonderful things that are there, I'm reminded there's a lot of other things that aren't there. It would be impossible to to just put in uh, a half of a page the extent of a person's life like Joyce. She was such a special, special lady in my life, and I'm sure in each of our lives. Her picture on the front says it all, doesn't it? Uh, It's as though we could just speak to her. And it was impossible to be around her long without feeling comfortable and feeling right at ease. So I want to say to Cindy and Jeff and Brenda today and and the grandsons, uh, Brandon and Zach, that our prayers are with you. Um, We will always feel a part of your family and the closeness that you've shared through the years. It's just been a real blessing. So we welcome you here today, and uh, I know that God is going to encourage our spirit and and help us through this time. It's not an easy time, but he'll make it possible. Would you pray with me, please? Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful today for your presence. For Father, when your children come together, you are in our midst. We come today remembering what a great gift, Lord, to remember those special times of celebration 
those special times of being family. And God, I just pray that you will give us your help and strength through this time. Father, be with this dear family, encourage their heart. And had a tough couple of years, but Father, you seem to have met that need, and we certainly want to give you glory and honor. But we thank you for the length of Miss Joyce's life, 83 years. Maybe not long enough for us, but yet a long life. And I just pray that you will bless the family in helping them through this time and that we will continue to go on and live our lives that it might bring glory to you. So thank you for this opportunity of coming as friends and family today. The encouragement that you will provide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to uh, say my piece now because I won't get to later. But uh, Joyce and Tommy, Cindy and Jeff and Brenda, they've been like family to Pat and I. We've watched them kids grow up uh, since they were little. Jeff and I was talking earlier, <laughs> and when I found out that Joyce had passed, First thing, Ruth, I thought, oh, Lord, heaven is really going to be something. <laughs> and poor old Ted, he's going to catch it. <laughs> and I always remember Ted. You remember that little dog y'all had? We would go over for the Christmas party, and Ted would catch Tommy not looking. And that little dog would get over by the fish pond. And Ked would take his foot and like that, and that dog would go. And, and he, he loved to do that. And, but that was the way we did. At Christmas, we had a lot of work for him. Pat was a bookkeeper. I was in the warehouse when I first started, and then I went into sales. And as I said, Brenda always helped me hang blinds. Me and her were the blind hangers. And... Uh, but they were a great blessing. I want you to know that. Your mom and dad were a great blessing to us. We loved them dearly. And I love you all. And this song I'm going to sing is Amazing Grace. And God's Amazing Grace. If you never heard the story how this song was written, you need to look it up because it's very interesting. And as I've sung over the years with different groups, this has always been one of the songs that we all so. Amazing grace the sound that saved a like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace. I fear relief. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed through many days. And snare I had already come. His grace has brought He saved the heart, and grace will lead me home. Well, when we, oh, we've been there 10,000 years, 
bright shining as the sun. We've no less day to sing God's praise than when we first be God. Thank you, Brother Will. The Bible tells us precious in the sight of God is the death of his saints. There are often times I looked at that verse and I wondered, how could that be precious? I've been in the hospital rooms. I've seen the last moments that a person spends on this earth. Sometimes it's very peaceful. Sometimes it's not so peaceful. But I think I have an understanding of that verse. Precious because they are now with God. They're at peace. They're complete. And they understand I don't know about you, but for the last couple of years, I've, um, I haven't. And I got to thinking a couple of weeks ago, that's why God has sent His Son Jesus into the world, because we're going to outlive this world. This world isn't going to hang out long. But you and I, in Christ Jesus, will spend eternity in His presence. So if you're discouraged, disheartened, hang on. You're going to outlive this world, Okay. And uh, we'll be with him forever and ever. I found out through the years that the most important times of a setting such as this is the times that we turn to the Bible and we read those verses that will speak to us and bring encouragement. There's two that I'd like to share that all seem to be always read at a, at a funeral service. But it's like amazing grace. I never get enough of it. Okay. The first one is in the 23rd Psalm. And David says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare us to table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And then I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We find in John chapter 14 another very favorite passage in times such as this. Jesus, in his words, are instructing discouraged, beleaguered disciples. And we're going to go through some horrendous times. And here's what he said to them. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said, Lord, we, we know not whether thou goest, and how can, how can we know the way? And then Jesus answered him, Thomas, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. How wonderful it is to know today that there is life beyond this world. It's great to know that uh, we can make our reservation because Jesus Christ has provided it all for us. I've learned through the years to feel sorry for people that feel that they have to work their way to God. You see, God has done all the work. He sent his son Jesus into the world and Jesus gave his life because of God's great love for us. 
I'm always reminded of John 3, 16, and I hope you are, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So we realize that salvation doesn't depend upon who we are or what we've done. For if it did, we would never get to heaven. But salvation depends upon who Jesus is, the Son of God, and what He's done for us. He took our sin. He took our shame. He took our place. And He gave His life for us. I believe through faith in Jesus that Miss Joyce is in the presence of God right now. And she's having a great time. We, we don't want her back here, but we want to go be with her. And that's what Jesus is encouraging here in John 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I will come again, receive into myself that where I am, there you may be also. So it's a great day when the child of God goes home. It's a wonderful time of celebration. Miss Joyce didn't have a lot of good days in the last while, but she had one good day, that day that she went to be with the Lord. It seemed that she was at peace. Finally, the pain that had wrecked her body seemed to subside, and she had one good day to say goodbye to you guys, to let you know how much she loved you and how much she cared. So I'm appreciative of that opportunity that God has given each of you. In the picture that we looked at earlier, we realized that Joyce is completely, completely laughing. I remember that laugh, don't you? She could get tickled over a lot of different things. She was laughing on that picture. I just am amazed to look at it. I think it's because she enjoyed people. She did. People, she was just happy to be with folk. One of the toughest family has been because you just couldn't come around like you used to come when people were sick. I mean, they won't even let you in the hospital. Uh, nursing home out unless you stand at the window outside and wave. Another thing Joyce liked was good food. <laughs> uh, I, I don't, I'm sure she was a good cook. Her overshadowed her cooking. Uh, and uh, she appreciated Tommy's cooking, but she, she didn't, wasn't always that happy with it. It was something about that uh, tomato pudding she didn't really like, I don't think. But Tommy would always have that pudding. Now, I told him right up front, I love just about the way he did. And I love, I haven't in a couple of years. He has been too low. Um, and his fudge, man, if you had a sweet tooth, that. That was something. So Miss Joyce would stand in or sit in the in the shadows of, of the um, bragging that Tommy would get back from people. But she loved people and she loved good food. I turned them on to a place. Found out they had a place up in up in the Benson. I said, Have you ever been to Meadow? And he looked at me like I was crazy. A meadow? There's plenty of meadows up there. I said, No, 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 no. This is a restaurant in Meadow, North Carolina. It's it's called uh, I, I think it's Meta Cafe or something. I saw them after that. You won't believe how good. They even called me from there one time. I said, guess where we are? I said, I don't know, but it better not be Meadow, but that's good food, and, and that's such a blessing to know that uh, she is with people that she's missed for a while. There's a great reunion taking place in heaven because of uh, the fact that Jesus has provided a way for us to go home. One last passage I want to encourage you with is found in the book of Psalms again, and it's, and it's Psalm 90. Psalm 90. It talks about the certainties of life. The certainties of life. You're thinking, well, Pastor Ken, life isn't really certain. We may start out in the morning, but we may not end up here you know, by, the, by evening. And there are a lot of uncertainties. But I want to talk to you about some certainties, okay? And indeed, these are true. You can bank on them. Certainty number one is life is short. 83 years sounds like a long time, but it's not long enough. We would always love to spend one more day with that person we love. So keep in mind, okay? Certainty of life, life is short. 
eternity is long. Second thing, life is uncertain. We don't know how long we have on this earth. 83 years sounds wonderful, but I've done funerals for people who were just hours old, little babies. So we never know. Life is uncertain because death can come at any age. It really can. And then number three, not only is life short, not only is life uncertain, but life is a precious gift from God. It really is. You realize how precious it is today, don't you? You really do. I remember when my parents passed, I would have given anything to be able to go into their house and sit down with them one more time. So we realize that, Lord, you've been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or even before you formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath, and we spend our years as a tale that is told. And every life has that tale about them, the experiences, the good things, the bad things. There's a lot of valleys in life, but there's a lot of mountaintops too. If you're going through a valley right now, let me encourage you. There's a mountain on both sides of it. So you just come down the mountain, you're in the valley, there's another mountain there. Go ahead and climb it. God will help you. He goes on to say, the days of our lives are three score years and ten. A score is 20, so three would be 60 and 10 would be 70. So a person is 70 years old. The days of our lives are three score years and 10. And if by reason of blessing strength, they become four score, which would be 80 years. Miss Joyce lived 83 years. If they become four score, there will be strength labor and sorrow, for it will soon be cut off and you'll fly away. In a little while, Brother Will is going to be singing a song that was written in light of this verse. It's entitled, I'll Fly Away. So, with all of that understanding about the shortness of life, uh, all of that understanding about the uncertainty of life, all that understanding about life being a precious gift from God, Here's what the psalmist says, and summing all of that up. So, teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. It would be a very wise thing to trust God with your life and walk with Him every day. Because one of these days you're going to say, and wants to die, and after that the judgment. Be home. A movie recently. And one of the men said this, and it registered with me. He said, basically, all of us are homeless. Place down here is not our home for us. And that home is in heaven. Pray with me. Our heavenly for the opportunity of encouragement today. We know where Miss Joyce is. If we could multiply the smile in the bulletin, it would have to be multiplied. The peace, the joy that she feels right now is beyond any. So, Father, help us. We're We're the ones that are going to have to struggle through these days that are ahead. But Father, because you're with us, you can bring tremendous encouragement. So thank you, Father, for the wonderful gift that you've given us, the gift of life. And Jesus came and he said, I give you life and I give it abundant. I give it eternally. I give it forever. So, Father, bless this face, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Can y'all hear me? That song was, um, I'm gonna try to do this, but I have a proxy over there to read this for me if I can't. Um, that song was one of my mom's favorite songs and um, our, our cousin right over here sang that. So we had some technical difficulties, but I'm glad we got them solved and we got to play that because mom played it over and over. And she would tell any and everybody who would listen that that was her, her nephew, Dennis. So that was a, um, a favorite of hers. So we want to thank you uh, from Cindy, Jeff, and I. We want to thank you so much for being, and I'm, I'm going to read this. Sorry, I'm not the best speaker, but um, thank you for being here. Uh, it means so much. I know with COVID and everything going on, it, it's wonderful to see all your faces out there. I'm uh, the youngest of the Barnes kids. I'm Brenda, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about my mom. As you know, she struggled with a lot of serious health issues. Um, she had chronic things, uh, COPD, congestive heart failure, a lot of a lot of things going on. And like Pastor Ken said, she had um, a lot of bad days. And but a lot of people didn't know that because she. Got uh, uh, Daryl's or other restaurants you know, and, and smile and laugh and joke and, and cut up and I see a lot of neighbors that she used to sit with at TL's and loved it so that face for everybody and, and she always looked like she was having a good time and she was but she, she was struggling so um, 
So in, in, in many notes and on Facebook, I'm shaking, I can leave. In many notes on Facebook, um, people had tons of notes, text, you know, notes on, on there. And um, so people describe mom appropriately with these words, hilarious, a spitfire, feisty, adorable, non-judgmental, God-fearing, caring, intuitive. One person in their note described a time when mom, when mom approached him in McDonald's and noticed he was struggling. What was going on? Verbal advice that helped him think through the situation, and he really appreciated that. He said he never forgot. Others mentioned how mom loved to be surrounded by people. She loved to socialize and cut up and laugh, and we all know that. Um, <clears throat> she had all three of us children wrapped around her finger. Um, Jamie over there sitting with our family is part of the family, and uh, she's been caring for mom for like nine months now. And she said that we spoiled mom, and she had to deal with it. So, and there's some other caregivers, Anne Marie, and some other folks who, and Lynette, and different ones, Tanya, who helped care for mom as well. But y'all know we we spoiled her, and she she wanted you to jump when she wanted you to jump. So, so sorry about that. Um, if you were at, to ask her closest family or friends about memory, when mom was trying to retell a funny story, she would get to laughing so hard <laughs> that she would start crying. And then when she'd start crying, she'd get this high-pitched voice, and you couldn't understand a thing she was saying. And then she'd get silent, and it was that silent laugh, and all you saw was body language. You know, she'd just laugh, and... and uh, the, the story never got out. You wouldn't know what in the heck the story was, but you'd laugh your head off anyway. So that's kind of, we never did hear the end of a story sometimes. And I remember a time when we met for a family gathering in Greenville at Parker's Barbecue, and my mom and dad had just gotten a new car, a new hybrid car. <laughs> And my dad was bragging about what great gas mileage it got. And my cousin Elaine said, what kind of car did you get? And, and mom, I shouldn't say this in probably this setting, but, um, and mom got the Toyota part right. She got that right. But when it came to the, uh, she got a little tongue tied on the, on the model. And I'm not going to say the word, but it started with a P and it ended with an S. And uh, it rhymes with Venus. So she said, we got a Toyota Venus. But I'll let Again, she told the story, tried to tell the story later, and nobody could get to the punchline because she can't tell it because she's laughing so hard. And uh, our cousin Mary sent us a text that was just perfect. And as everyone's alluded to, my grandmother and my mother together was just crazy. I mean, they were wild. So my cousin Mary sent this text, and it brought a, a smile to our faces. It said, I don't know what it will be like when we get to heaven, but I can just imagine your grandmother zooming in on the golf cart, sliding to the gate, gold dust flying, telling your mom to jump in <laughs> that the best is yet to come. And if you knew my mama and you know mom, you know that, that is, that's probably what, we, what happened. She zoomed up there in the golf cart. She picked her up and said, let me show you around. Um, mom and all of us have been very blessed to have been matched. Mom was matched up with Jamie as a caregiver, and we've been very blessed by that. Um, they had such a bond. I can't even describe it. it <laughs> they had... That she she liked Jamie better than she did us a lot of the time. She, she would uh, she would allude to the fact that her standard breakfast of two eggs over medium with toast, and and all three of us knew how to cook th two eggs over medium with toast, but apparently we didn't do it as good as Jamie did. So Jamie does it this way, and Jamie cuts the toast, and Jamie puts the the, the eggs on the toast, and I'm like, well, Jamie's not here. 
And that's that's it. Um, I just wanted you to guys to know how funny and fun my mom my mom was, and we love her and we miss her. And uh, we made a promise to mom that we were going to Cindy, Jeff, and I, and my husband and kids, and Jamie, all of us are going to take care of each other and and uh, get through this together. So thank you so much. And I, J- Jamie, no. Anybody else? If, if anybody else would like to share a story or. Thank you, Brenda. Is there anyone? You, you don't have to come up here. You could stand right where you are. It'd be fine. If you have a story or something you'd like to say to the family. Feel free. As you've had all the fun. Mm -hmm. Fun it is. We come to a very important part of of our service. This is as far as we can go with Miss Joyce. We're going to leave this place. The funeral directors will take care of all the necessities that need to be done. But this is as far as we can go now. We usually call it a time of committal. And there's a passage over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that that really has helped me through the years to understand when I've come at a time such as this with my family and friends. And there have been so many of them I've had to say goodbye to for a while. But listen to what the Apostle Paul says when it comes to committal. It's sort of like the, the Old Testament from dust to dust, ashes to ashes. And this body is not Joyce. This body is a house, is a a tent that she used. Her spirit and her soul are in the precious keeping of her father, God the Father. And she is indeed with him because of Christ. But notice what Paul says about this mystery. Behold, I'm going to show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And then we'll say, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I am so glad, family, that you will see Miss Joyce's smiling face again. You'll see those who are in Christ Jesus and safe. I tell you what, you, you, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Trust Jesus, walk with Jesus. And as we commit the body to the ground from which it came, the soul and the spirit is in the safekeeping of a heavenly father. It may be hard for you to understand, but he loved your mom more than you do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the encouragement of this time, for the beauty of these moments. We thank you for the great gift of memory. No one can ever take it from us. There'll be times that we hear a sound and we'll remember. There'll be times that we catch a a wafting smell in the air and we'll remember. There'll be times that we'll think, if I could just go to their house one more time and sit down with them. But Father, even though we can't do all those things, and thank you, Father, for all you've done in meeting their needs. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.
I'm going to ask you to stand, please. Sunday morning When this life is over I'll fly away To a home On that celestial shore I'll fly away And when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life have gone, I'll fly away. And like a bird, from prison bars that flow, I'll fly away. And I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, bye. Mr. Day.